Hi, I'm Olivia. If you're new to this channel, I create oil paintings and I share the process and techniques that I use to create them. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I created this portrait painting of my baby son. You will see the process I used to develop it, as well as the color mixing of the skin tones. And I'm going to share with you a lot of other tips along the way. So if you'd like to see that, stay tuned! Back in 2020, I was invited by my friend and great artist Christine Wharton to participate in a portrait exhibition at the Art on the Key Gallery in Kaiapoi in the South Island of New Zealand. This exhibition was about celebrating people who were very important to us artists in the show, which was called Let Me Count the Ways. That was a good motivation for me to create a painting that I had in my mind for a few years. I kept this idea in my head since 2018, when I took some pictures of my baby son while he was playing on a rubber mat in our living room. I just happened to have my cell phone handy and managed to take these shots. This one ended up being my favorite one, and that picture was asking to be painted. So let's talk about the process I went through to create this painting. I like using the, the pro panels for portraits. These panels are made in New Zealand. You are likely to source a similar product locally. These panels are highly warp resistant. They are made with a five ply board and some extra bracing. Prior to painting, I prepared the board by applying two coats of golden GEC 100 to seal the front, back and sides to prevent wood movement and support induced discoloration, known as SID. Then I applied a coat of gesso primer on the next day and another coat a bit thicker than the previous coat on the following day. I sanded it slightly between coats, except for the, the last layer, as I like the texture of the bristle brush marks showing through my painting. The next stage was to tone the panel. I usually use earth colors uh, for that as they are more neutral to work on. It depends on what I'm painting and also what effects in wood I want to create in my painting. At times I use acrylic paint for that, but other times I, I like using water soluble oils with a little bit of water just to help me spread it thinly on the canvas. For this painting, I used raw amber and a little bit of burnt sienna, water mixable oils uh, made by Winsor & Newton. I had to let it dry for a, for a week to be dry to the touch before I, I drew on top of it. Then I drew the, the main shapes and decided to do an, a value study to sort the forms and tonal values first, as it was such a complex picture with several elements. That gave me um, a great opportunity to get to know the subject better. I used charcoal for that in a blending stamp to create a smooth transition. That gave me a, a good idea of um, how the, you know, the parts on this picture related to each other. Um, for example, the shades on the face and then the relationship between the, you know, the, the values, the tonal values of the, the stripes on the head, as well as to get some details sorted on the clothing. So then I, I, I just sanded my uh, charcoal just to get a little bit of that, that powder and um, to spread it just smoothly on the, on the baby's arm. So I, um, that way I avoided um, having some hard lines on it. Then using the blending stamp just to create a little bit of form. I like using the, the blending stamp um, because it, it just blends it nicely and beautifully and it's much better than using my finger to, to do that job. Um, well, it was time for me to, to stop what I was doing and I'm sharpening the pencil. Sometimes I forget to do it. I'm so focused on 
what I'm doing that I just forget. So I'll just speed up this here as we can go quickly through the, this process and you can see the next stage, which is the color mixing. I've used a white uh, soap pencil to highlight the arm and uh, create a little bit more form. Next step is the color mixing. I'm going to use these colors to mix the skin tones. They are orange umber, ultramarine blue, primary red magenta made by My Mary Puro, cadmium red light or medium, medium is fine too, yellow ochre, primary yellow or cadmium yellow light, and um, either titanium white or titan buff. I, I quite like using titan buff. Uh, for that, so that that's what I'm using there, um, and it's made by Williamsburg. It is a warm tinted white. So I'm mixing Titan Buff with a little bit of yellow ochre and cadmium red, and I add a bit of magenta red and ultra blue. And I split it to make a lighter version of it, just by adding Titan Buff, and then a slightly darker version uh, with more yellow ochre. A bit of magenta red, ultra blue, and burnt umber into the, that mixture. Then I put some aside to make a warmer version of it by adding more primary magenta to it. Then I mix a darker version of that color um, by adding more burnt umber, a bit more, more primary red, and cadmium red. And I follow the same steps to mix a darker shade here. I'm just going to shift this one to go here in the right order from light to dark. So then the next stage is to mix a cooler version of this um, color scheme for some shadows, some areas that appear to be cooler than the, the main skin tones. For that, I added a little bit of um, blue, ultramarine blue and yellow to shift the colors to the, the cooler side, the slightly greenish um, skin tones. Notice that I, I, I keep this um, new string of colors uh, parallel to the, the primary um, scale so that I, I know that those values are related to that, that main color scheme. That's an easier way for me to um, shift from cool to warm and vice versa when I'm painting without destroying the value masses. I, um, I've just used a bit of chromium oxide green in the cooler mixtures just to be a little bit more realistic with the, the cooler colors as you on the picture. So basically I have the, the, the main tonal values in the middle and the, um, at the bottom I have the cool version and at the top about three pink shades uh, for warmer areas like the cheeks, um, lips and etc. So the next stage is to start establishing the main values. So I usually start from the, the forehead because it's the easiest part to start with and it's a good way for you to warm up before you get into the tricky areas. So then I carry on. I, I usually keep the forehead a little bit um, more into a yellow base in contrast with the, the cheeks and nose that I go with a um, um, red and pinker color base. So I establish the, the main values, great form to give me an overall idea of the the picture. So I try not to get bogged down in detail as I I need to to see the, the value masses creating the, the overall form first. Then after getting the, the whole face blocked in I, I went back and worked on, on some of the details like the nose and the nostrils and the, the lips. I don't like the, the nostrils to be 
too dark and they actually um, quite reddish especially in um, children and babies yeah so then um, you see these stages it's quite focused on, on value masses to to modulate form create that three-dimensional um, look I love working and wet into wet. I think it just blends it, um, the layers beautifully. So I go back and um, add a few shades and just a slight contrast to to move things um, back like this area here and the uh, highlights on the cheeks and the, the tip of the nose and etc. to to bring the plane forward to to create an idea of roundness. As you apply dark colors, you push things back in the light colors, create the illusion of uh, things coming forward so that that works the same on the face. Especially um, when we're painting children, a child's face is so rounded, so smooth, so the values, the tonal values um, are so gradual. As we, we get older, the, the contrast on the face um, increases as well as the, um, that the muscles and bones become more pronounced and more established. So the, the ears, the ears can be quite tricky if we get caught up with the detail. So I like just using a couple of values that sometimes just want to block that in. And then, then I go back and, and add some, some more description. This stage is also good to, to paint the hair especially on babies because the, the hair is quite fine and, and quite feathery. So it's, it's a good idea to, to paint it in a blend into the, you know, the forehead and create that kind of soft, smooth transition between hair and forehead. So the next stage is to, to follow the same steps really in blocking the other areas the other skin areas like the neck in the chest the arms legs and um, yeah skin alone and start working on the head again I can start from light here because I've got the you know the dark shades um, of the charcoal stage and I like starting with the light because I don't want that dark wet paint on my way when I'm applying the the lights the, the white and gray So then again, using the same shades and a few darker values as well um, of these um, grayish colors to blocking the main shapes on the clothing. And I leave a hint of the, you know, the dark stripe just, just to know where I am and to move faster through it instead of trying to, to guess the, the forms and curves and etc. So using the same color that I used on the head for the, the blue stripes on the shirt. Then time to paint the overall. So I'm just going to speed up here and as it just, it would take too long to um, post the whole thing, of course. Um, yeah, so the process the same. The principle is the same, it's blocking in the main values, the main um, shades and then um, going back and working on some details. As I said, I like working wet into wet. So you'll see me going back and, and just layering uh, different values and shades on top just to create some form. 
So then time to start on the background and foreground. I didn't like the, the background that was on the, the photograph. I, I wanted the background to have a connection um, with things that he likes doing. And one thing he loves is being in the garden, picking flowers, exploring nature and its colors and having fun. So a suggestion of a garden that would be ideal. So I started working on that and just laying some colors, mostly having more saturated colors next to, you know, his legs and, and the foreground and then having the colors a little bit grayer and less saturated and up at the top on the background. So I'm just going back to the face. The first layer dried for a few weeks uh, before I started working on the second layer. I applied a little bit of an oil painting medium that I, I mixed myself and so I applied that on the face just to be better to add the new layer and uh, also I make sure that this new layer is a bit thicker and a bit fatter and more oil uh, ratio in the mixture. I love this stage of the painting. Um, it's when I can correct a few things that I I haven't achieved um, on the first layer and also uh, I can go back and highlight areas, darken other areas to create a little bit more form. It's working on those accents, the extreme values. So with a darker shade I can emphasize the, the tonal value on the nostril and it gives a little bit more depth. And I don't like going too dark. Children, they, they don't have, um, you know, the nose structure formed yet so the nose is quite low and so therefore the shadow will be a little bit more reddish so now time to go back to the background and do a little bit more so i'm adding a, a bit of green here just to suggest the, um, a bit of grass in mean, the distance trying to leave the brush strokes quite loose so then time to use those um, long filbert brushes to create some flowers. Again, I, I, want, I want to explore brushwork and more impressionistic approach. I got some of these flowers. They are calendula flowers. My son saw them in the corner of the church that we go to and he was so fascinated with them and picked one uh, we took it home and he was playing with it and it was just what i needed for my painting so that gave me an idea of getting the flower and the sticking that on the, the painting i tried one before but i i wasn't happy with it and i just rubbed off then i taped the the flower on my painting just to be able to see if my idea would work and it was a perfect size and also I would be able to see the cast shadow on his clothes uh, on the painting so that that was perfect so I photographed it I filmed as well but um, I lost the, the footage by accident but anyway I managed to photograph some of the stages and you can see how I did it I just drew some oval shapes one for the center, one for the petals, and then I painted the petals uh, mostly with a couple of shades and used a small long filbert brush just to paint the petals. So that's what the painting was like when I finished it for the, the exhibition. I was sure that I, I wasn't totally done with it. I wanted to do a little bit more on the background, but there was no time for that. So at that moment, it was just fine. But for me, I knew that I could go further. I put it aside for quite a few months before I went back to it. Then, and that way I had a clear um, idea of what I wanted to do. So I worked on the flowers again and added more details on the, the flowers that were on the foreground and um, worked on the background as well just to suggest some some of the vegetation in, in a more impressionistic way a more suggested way so i added um, a few purple flowers just for contrast and for fun and to create that sort of environment that he likes to be in i'm using an ivory dagger brush here made by rosemary co and those brushes are great to create some uh, details, flowers and blades of grass, stems. It's, it's such a dynamic uh, brush, very versatile. Then 
I decided that I wanted the top of the background to be different, to have a little bit more contrast, because I had all mostly all the dark colors um, on the bottom. I thought I needed something there. Trees. So trees in the distance, just for a bit of contrast and to describe the scene better. With all the changes, I noticed that I needed a little bit more shadow on the head, so I used a bit of glazing, just using kind of a dark color to create the, that depth. Colors that I like using for that, a mixture of ultramarine blue and then a little bit of burnt umber. Yeah, so I, I applied that, just that, that layer of glaze of color and because I didn't want to lose what I did before, you know, the textures and everything. So I wanted the color to be a little bit more translucent. Then I did the same with the forehead, just increasing the depth on the, the shadow and to follow that as well. As soon as you change one area, you need to check the surrounding areas to see if you need to do any alterations. And yes, so they go together. And then the same with the arm, I noticed that I needed a little bit more shadow colors reflecting back onto his arm from the foreground. So that's the final piece, you can see the before and the after. I'm quite happy with the after and my son was happy as well and uh, very excited to hang it up on his uh, bedroom wall. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed working on this painting and I enjoyed working on uh, putting this video together to share my process and some tips with you and I hope you can get away with some useful tips to help you with your painting. So if you would like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on social media and subscribe to my website so that you can get updates on lessons, videos and new paintings. For more in-depth tutorials you can check my courses page on my website the link is in the description area below this video thanks for watching so long <laughs>